When I was around four years old, I went to my grandparents' house for my very first solo sleepover. I remember playing in their guest room and always having my attention drawn to a specific corner of the room. Anyway, that evening I went to bed soundly. I woke up right around dawn, and I can remember as clear as day seeing a small humanoid figure walking across the windowsill of the window facing east. I remember the dawn light creating a sort of silhouetted image of this thing, but I could tell that it was wearing clothing. And from the waist down, it had a sort of transparent look to it. As it neared the end of the windowsill, I can remember it noticing me watching it, and it quickly hopped off the sill into the dark corner of the room that had always seemed to draw my attention. A few years ago, I was visiting my mom and I brought it up. She said that she vividly remembers picking me up that morning, and I was scared out of my wits, to the point where I would refuse to ever enter the same room again to gather my toys. I've run this encounter through my head more times than I can count, trying my best to dismiss it as a childhood dream. But 30 years later, that memory sticks out in my mind as clear as day. I'm pretty sure I saw some kind of fey creature. I just don't know what. So this happened around five to six years ago to my uncle. He works for a big company which has offices all over the country, so he's been transferred a few times. This one time he was transferred to a big city, so he rented a big truck to move his furniture and other household items. They finished the packing by evening and decided to start the journey by 7pm in the night so that they could reach their destination by morning. My father was accompanying him. So they started their journey. By around 2 or 3 a.m., around 2 or 3 a.m., the truck driver slowed the truck a bit. So my uncle and my father asked what happened. He said that there was a lady standing ahead and that she might be asking for help and that we should check and make sure everything was okay. My uncle said, no, don't stop. We don't have time for all this, just keep going. He insisted but my uncle didn't let him stop. So when they reached their destination, he was a bit angry with my uncle and father. He said, why wouldn't you have let me help that woman? My uncle said, the thing is, there was no woman on the road. We didn't see any woman standing there. Only you could see her. But we didn't want to tell you this because otherwise you might have been scared, and that would have been bad since we were driving on the highway in the night. Let me start by saying that growing up, my little sister never slept in our room as a child, like ever. Normally she would sleep with my mom due to her freaking out about one thing or another. To be honest, it made me feel a little bit uncomfortable about sleeping in there by myself, which I did every night. Her constant freakouts about it, coupled with the feeling of being watched while I was in there alone, even in the middle of the day, made me feel super uneasy. That being said, there was one night that I came home from hanging out with my boyfriend at the time, and I walked into my room. And who do I see? My little sister. At the time, she was five and I was 15, and she was totally fine and in the top bunk. I was incredibly surprised that my mom got her to sleep in her own bed. She looks down from her bunk, and points to my great-grandmother's rocking chair. It was then that I noticed that it was slightly rocking back and forth. She laughed as she pointed and said, look, it's grandma. I immediately yelled for my mom to take her and the rocking chair out of my room. My great-grandma had died a few months before and my sister barely knew her. Without pictures, she wouldn't even know what she looked like. It was so creepy.
Quite a while ago, I was inside an Irish pub in Donegal, visiting my aunt on holiday. It was a music night in the pub, and my aunt was playing the fiddle. A couple were on guitar and bass, and the regulars in the pub sang along. As well as my family and I who were visiting, an American couple who were also visiting were in the pub having a pint. The American guy was really nice, offered me and my brother a Coke, and about 30 minutes passed while we're in the bar together. I'm a little bit shy, and I'm thinking of ways to start a conversation and act social. The American guy's wife was talking to my mom, and I was thinking of saying something stupid to try my luck. The first thing that came into my head was, are you from Tennessee? I knew that they were Southern because of their accents, but I had no idea which state they were from. I decided it was a dumb idea, and I kept quiet, sipping my Coke. Five minutes pass, and my mom asks, so which state are you from? And the American woman replies, Tennessee. I was surprised by the odds, but I didn't really do anything about it. For the rest of the time that I was in the pub, though, I just sat there thinking about the odds. Many people in many states have southern accents. As far as I knew, it could have been any one of them. I don't know if it was a glitch in the matrix or what, but it just seemed a little bit too good to be true. This happened to me when I was in the fourth grade. I moved into a new school. Someone once said to me that the stairs in that school were haunted. The story goes that one day some students were going down the stairs when they got pushed. A teacher just walked by and asked, what happened? Who pushed you? And at that exact moment, the teacher herself got pushed. Another story goes that this particular ghost was running around the hallway during assembly. Also, this ghost apparently had no arms or legs. I asked other people if this was true, and they said that it was. So I got curious, and I decided to check it out with one of my friends at break. So to get to this supposedly haunted staircase, you had to go through a door. In front of that door is another door. Open that door, and the stairs are right there. My friends and I opened the first door, and were about to open the second. But then I saw something, a shadowy figure that seemed to have no arms. My friend saw it too, so we ran out the back door to the playground. Now you might say that it could have just been a shadow of someone else, but the figure was standing right in the middle of the stairs, not against a wall or anything like that. I never used those stairs again unless I was walking with a teacher or a group of people. To this day, I still wonder if I imagined it or if that thing was really there. So my mom and I were camping in our sort of local national park in the Alps. I had a headache and had had a rough night, but nothing special. My mom, who thought that I had slept really well, really did not. The next morning, she told me about the dreams she had had, and that they were really realistic and they kind of scared her. She thought she heard men talking outside of our tent in a foreign language, and thought that we were going to be in trouble, being that we were two women alone in the middle of nowhere. Then she saw a woman walk slowly just next to our tent while looking in at us, kind of wearing a farm outfit. The next thing she saw was a whole lot of people dressed in white in the trenches, just standing there. Back in the day, this national park was the site of a World War event. There are still remnants standing around. That particular night, I didn't see anything particular, and I had no idea my mom was having such bad dreams. We thought it was maybe sleep paralysis, but the more we talk about it, it feels more like an encounter than a simple episode of sleep paralysis. Maybe they were just dreams, but she said it was nothing like any dream she'd ever had, that it was so vivid that she was sure it was real. We're okay, we're just wondering about the weirdness of it all. 
and we're curious if anything similar has happened to you. Once a week for the past two years, I've walked to and from a supermarket. On the way, I walk down a long road which has houses on one side and a whole lot of nothing on the other, except for the remains of a little store that sold newspapers and daily essentials. For the past two years, I've passed these remains and recalled the time, around six years ago, that my friend and I were passing the store, but we had to take shelter there when the heavens suddenly opened and a heavy storm started. It made me feel a little melancholic to look at the remains, thinking of happier times and so on. What used to be a store that happily served its local community was now barely three partially knocked down walls and a pile of rubble. Last week, it was the three walls and a pile of rubble. Today, to my utter astonishment, it's the same store as it was six years ago. I couldn't really say what it looked like in between then and the past two years, as I only moved back to the area two years ago. Kind of run down and old looking, but certainly not a pile of rubble. I can't be sure, but I believe it's the same two old men running it, who called my friend and I a cab that day when we were caught in a storm. Three weeks ago rubble, today just like it was years ago? I'm pretty sure this is some kind of glitch in the matrix but it's my first experience since childhood that I would describe as supernatural. My sister and I were sleeping one night, and I was woken up. I don't know by what but I was able to wake my sister up as well. The room was dark, but I distinctly remember seeing two soldier-like decorated generals at the side of our beds, similar to drawings of Pleiadian aliens. Once I woke my sister up, a portal opened up on my side of the bed, along with a vessel. We both got into the vessel and noticed that it was on a track. My sister and I both woke up, remembering this experience and we still do to this day. I can remember it all. She says she remembers them being extremely kind and saying things like, let's go have fun. Just really warm, inviting, and all the nice things. We went into this vessel, which was like a ride. I just remember it being like the Peter Pan ride, or it's a small world. And then it was over, and I don't remember much more. I always used to look down at the ground in amusement park rides to know if they were real. I don't know why I did that, but I remember looking down at the ground, and it was so real and detailed. I can't remember much about the ride, but it was bright and vivid with flowers. I also live very close to NASA, for what it's worth. I've never had any more experiences like that afterward, but yeah, I thought I would see what you guys thought. Short story, but my grandmother lived with us for a few years, and when she would visit, she stayed in our guest bedroom. Because of old age, she had trouble going up the stairs, so we installed a stair lift. My grandma hated it when anybody besides her used it. Being 10 or 11 years old, my friends and I thought it was fun, and they always wanted to use it. My grandma passed when I was 13. On my next birthday, 14, my friends all came over for my birthday party. Everyone lined up to use the stair lift. Since my grandma had passed away, it was no longer in use, and I figured, why not let them use it? I was standing at the top of my stairs, and my friends were at the bottom, with one person going up the stairs on the lift. That's when a ceramic-framed painting suddenly flew off the wall and shattered. It was right outside the room that my grandma always stayed in. It was a painting hung in a way that you had to lift up a wire off of a nail in order to take it down. 
and the nail was at a sloped angle, basically pegging it to the wall. There's no way that gravity could have been the cause of this fall. I like to think it was my grandma coming back to say, don't use my stair lift, because it was something that truly bothered her. Either way, it wasn't scary, but comforting, knowing that she was still around, looking out for and watching over us. I figure that this is probably just the fault of the camera, but I also don't have an explanation for this photo. This photo was taken on the date stamped in the lower right-hand corner. I was just less than a year into a six-year contract with the Army, and I was doing some field training down in Fort Polk, Louisiana for a few weeks. While I was away, my wife at the time was staying with her family back in our hometown in California. She wound up taking a trip with her brother and his kids down to Disneyland. She took a whole lot of pictures while she was there, but this one stood out a little bit. If you look down a little, between the O and the R of the California Adventure sign, there seems to be a pair of legs and the lower portion of a torso. When I first saw the picture, my immediate conclusion was ghost, but after 11 years of this picture sitting on an external hard drive, lost and largely forgotten, I found it, and I thought I would share it to get some opinions. It does seem to be casting a shadow, so that's what makes me think that there might have just been something wrong with the camera. But this is the only photo like this from the entire trip, and I don't know enough about digital cameras, or cameras period, to say either way what this is. But it's still pretty eerie to look at. So it's 6 a.m. right now. I couldn't really sleep after this. I first woke up at midnight, raised my head a bit, looked toward the door, and then realized that what had woken me was the really creepy voice of someone singing. Just by the sound of it, I could definitely tell that it was a doll and not a human. I was so tired that I didn't really realize what had just happened. The TV was on in the other room, so in my head I thought it might have been coming from that. In my really tired state, I just told myself, Hell, if I had to own a doll, I'd shit myself right now, and went back to sleep. Then at 2 a.m., I heard the same creepy singing. This time, the TV was off. Honestly, the more awake I was getting, the more I was questioning what was actually going on. I realized that I wasn't imagining it, so I've been sat here for four hours now, thinking about how fucking real this is. I even googled it in the hope that it happened to someone else before. I'm so creeped out. Just thinking about that moment, I know that it was there, just in the other room. I feel like I even know what this doll looks like, even though I don't have dolls and I've never seen it. I have no idea what's going on. Whenever I tell this story, people call me crazy, or tell me that my grandparents' house is haunted. But to be honest, this stuff only happens to me, and it's only happened three or four times that I can think of. It was a normal day. I was hanging out at home, waiting for my mom to come home on her lunch break. It was about 30 minutes before she got home that I was watching SpongeBob or Hannah Montana that had happened. At the time, it scared the hell out of me, since I knew that I was home alone with all the doors locked. But I felt a hand on my shoulder. Then I smell a smell that I haven't smelled in years. 
followed by a voice that made all the hairs on my body stand up. It was my great grandma. She said, I'm here, Miha. I'm always here. I love you. As for the smell, it wasn't until a month or so later that I put together what it was. My grandma had wanted to have a vial of my great grandma's old perfume in the home. I smelled that, and it reminded me of the smell that I had smelled when I felt the hand. And then I remembered that that was what my great grandma always wore. To this day, everyone brushes this story off or asks me why out of all the family members she would visit me. I don't know. I just know that she did. So, for slight context, I'm 22, and as my mom was pregnant with me, my grandfather passed away from lung cancer. The only thing he ever got me was this little clown doll that was supposed to hang over my crib. When you pull down the clown's legs, they stretch out, the whole body does, and it plays the little music box style song as it winds itself back up. The tune slowly stops over the course of about two minutes as the clown slowly goes back up to where it started. Now, I know this already sounds like a cheesy horror story setup, but stick with me. When I was a child, maybe seven or eight years old, I used to have the clown hanging from the metal curtain tiles back in my room, probably because I was too young to have read or watched it. But one night, my mom walked up the stairs and into my room while I was asleep because the clown was playing its song, but it hadn't had its legs pulled down. It apparently played for about five minutes, abruptly stopped and never wound down. I do remember that my mom had recorded it on her old flip phone and showed me in the morning. We found out later in the day that on that night, my great grandma had passed away. So my grandfather's mom. My mom is super adamant that it was her dad sending some sort of signal, but I would be interested to know what you guys think. When I was 11, my dad, my sister, and I moved into a townhouse. At night, I would wake up and see two different men, they were different every night, walk into my room. My room was right next to the bathroom, which is where the two men would walk in from. One would have a top hat and a tailcoat. The other wore dark sunglasses and a trench coat, but the silhouettes would change. It would creep me out so much that I would hide under my covers. Sometimes I got too scared and slept in my dad's bed. One night I was sleeping in my dad's room and two identical twin girls with long black hair and hollowed out eyes came up to my dad while he slept. They didn't say anything. They just stared at him and then they went away. Our neighbor John told me that I could see ghosts. I've been told I'm a medium, but I block it out as an adult. I'm 20 now. In John's house, I saw a woman hanging by the neck in his kitchen, and then in the basement, a man with a cleaver dripping in blood. I was so scared that I left. Now I'm 20, and I still believe in ghosts. People tell me that I should develop my gift, but I don't know if I want to develop it any more than it already has. My dad died the day that my daughter turned 10 months old. She slept through the night with no issues since around five months. But the night he died at 2 a.m., she suddenly cried out. My husband and I have a baby monitor with sound and visuals, so we pulled up the camera feed to see if it was her waking up 
or just a sound in her sleep. We saw her standing in her crib, smiling and giggling at the side. She kept pointing to her toys and books and babbling away like she was playing. We just watched. I had just hung up the phone with my mom who was calling from the hospital, so I knew exactly who she was talking to. After a few minutes, she waved, curled up on her tummy, and went back to sleep. Now, several months later, we were having a particularly rough day with tantrums and being cranky. As I sat her down and walked off to grab a snack for her, I heard my dad's voice, clear as ever, say, Hey, behind me. I stopped walking and whipped around so fast I nearly fell to my knees. She immediately stopped crying and turned her head in the direction it had come from. Then she kept her gaze there and didn't cry again while I finished getting her food. I knew that I didn't imagine it if she had reacted to it as well. My dad still visits my daughter, his only grandchild, and it couldn't make me any happier. When my family hit hard times, we had to move into a small house where our uncle had recently committed suicide. I guess he had done this because of depression after his wife had died, which had happened the summer before. It all happened so fast that when we moved in, there was still a little bit of blood in one of the rooms. But on the third or fourth night of living there, my sister and I, who were sharing a room in the tiny house, were awake in our room playing video games at about one to two in the morning. Someone started knocking at our door. We didn't really think anything of it and shouted for whoever it was to come into our room. No answer. Another knock. We stopped and stared at the door and then another knock came. Then the doorknob did a full rotation and snapped back as if somebody was turning it and then let go very quickly. I got up and opened the door, expecting to see one of my other sisters or my mother, the only other people in the house at the time. I opened the door and stared into an empty hallway. I walked down the hall and I peeked into the other bedroom. My two younger sisters and my mother were both fast asleep. To this day, I can't explain what happened, but I still wonder who was turning that doorknob. When I was younger, around 18, I was visiting my aunt in Albuquerque. She lived at a little B&B &B that had a big field behind it at the time. The second night I was there, I couldn't sleep. Around midnight, this bizarre howl or scream or cry started up. It was really loud, even inside the house. Her cats seemed to be alerted as well. So I woke my aunt up. She said that she had never heard that in 10 years of living there. Bear in mind, she's an insomniac, so she's often up very late. When the sound kept going, she started toward the door to go see what it was. But I was like, I don't think so. So we stayed in. The sound continued until around sunrise. The owner of the B&B &B was out of town at the time. But when asked, she said that she had never heard a sound like that either. We asked some of her friends who said that they had heard that somebody was going around playing sounds on a loop, trying to lure people out of the house. That's really the only lead I have. I went out into the field the next day and I didn't see anything weird. Maybe it was just someone messing with people, trying to lure them out for some nefarious reason. Or maybe it was a cryptid. Either way, it was pretty creepy. It 
I used to be a supervisor for a janitorial company, and a couple of times a week, I had to go to a middle school and clean their hallway floors and gymnasium with a Zamboni-type vehicle, which mopped and scrubbed the floor. When I was there, I had the whole school to myself. I used to get finished quickly and go to the library and read while eating my dinner. Well, one morning after being there, I got a call from school security. They wanted me to come in. When I get there, I see a police car too. Understandably nervous, I go in. They ask me a few questions like, did you notice anything out of the ordinary or strange while you were here last night? No, I said, I hadn't. I usually had headphones in anyway. Security then shows me camera footage of someone breaking into one of the classrooms while I was riding the Zamboni not far away. I was there for another two hours, completely unaware of this. Nothing was stolen, but the worst part was they didn't have footage of the person leaving. They didn't go out the way they'd come in, and police had to sweep the entire school. Never did find out what happened with that one. But the fact that I was in there, completely alone, with someone who clearly had bad intentions, totally unaware, yeah, that freaked me out. I have four kids. I know that I have four kids, but recently I just feel like there should be another one, but they're missing. When we go out, I head count and I get flustered because I can't find the extra one. I have to consciously remind myself that there are only four, but my heart just doesn't believe it. I had just put it down as one of those weird feelings and I pushed it aside. Then, my parents sent money to my kids. They sent $100 to each kiddo. They sent me $500. I called them and asked them why they had put in so much, and they were confused and said that they told me they were sending $100 per child. I reminded them that I only have four kids. They were silent for a moment and then just kind of laughed and said they must be getting old because they thought there were five. Then tonight, my daughter walked into the lounge room. She looked around and said, I know we're all here, but our family feels small. My son agreed. I hadn't said anything to anybody about my feelings lately because they already think I'm ancient and forgetful at 40. I don't really know what this means, but it's definitely strange. And apparently it's not just me. Does anyone else ever have these feelings? Was my other kid lost in a glitch? I don't know what it could be. My brother used to live in the attic of the house we grew up in. It had an extremely dark and suffocating vibe. My brother went crazy in there. He would hear voices. He would be paralyzed, unable to move. He got an EEG done, but they couldn't find anything wrong with him. But after that, he had major behavioral issues. He had to go and live in this boarding school place for kids who had behavior problems. Unfortunately, he ended up ending his life. This was 25 years ago, so I have had time to heal a lot, but it still is hard. One day, I was on the second floor, and I heard dripping coming from the attic. I didn't want to go up there, but I needed to know what the cause of the dripping was. In the hallway, there was one hallway that connected three rooms. There was a random big puddle of water. It felt wrong, completely out of place. The ceiling above it looked normal, and the dripping stopped once I came to the puddle. I never heard it again. Nothing was wrong with the roof. My mom called a plumber, and there were no pipes near that area. It was one of many strange things to happen in that house, but it was definitely the strangest 
since there was physical evidence of something. Who knows what, though? So, there's been running in my attic for about five years, maybe longer, I'm not sure. It happens every single night, and somehow, it's almost exactly 5 a.m. every time. My mom and I used to put it down to just a bird or a squirrel that got in through the window, but there's no way that an animal has been living in the attic for five years, without a trace, running around at 5 a.m. for a minute or two, and then disappearing. My mom and I hear the running in different formations. She hears it go in a big figure eight and then stop in the center. I hear it run in a figure of eight several times and then run off to the side, go down, go side to side, and stop. I drew out the formation that I hear on paper and it was 81. I'm not sure if that holds any significance though. We both guessed the age of whatever's up there to be about six by the weight of the footsteps. It runs at about the speed that a child that age would. Slows down, stops, and then you don't hear it again until the next night. We plan to get our pastor involved to give us some advice, but whatever's up there, it doesn't seem like it needs holy intervention. It seems neutral. It seems tired. I don't know what we should do. We've never experienced anything like this before, but we know that there's something up there. This all happened when I was a kid. I was spending the weekend at my mom's house. My parents were separated, and I woke up one morning and watched some cartoons in her room while she slept. Eventually, I turned the TV off and went downstairs to make a bowl of cereal. I sat down at the table, which was about 10 feet from the open basement door. As I was eating, I heard my mom call me very loudly from the basement. The only things down there were a washing and drying machine and a toilet. I walked over to the door and peeked down there, and it was pitch black. That's when I remembered that my mom was asleep upstairs and hadn't come past me at all. So I freaked out, ran upstairs to her room, and sure enough, she was there asleep. There was no way that it could have been her, and it was just us in the house. The apartment gave me off, strange, and creepy vibes. My mom and I and a few other people all hated the feeling that you would get in the basement and the back room upstairs would give off very negative energy. Every time you went in there, you would start feeling kind of sad and very alert. She never used that room. It only had a couple of boxes in it for the five or so years that she lived there. Has anyone else had similar experiences? I was sitting downstairs in the kitchen, waiting for water to boil. I was talking to my brother downstairs for a bit, and he told me that he was going to take a shower. Soon after, my brother went upstairs to go shower. I was alone by myself downstairs, sitting on a chair, playing on my phone, and facing myself toward the opened bathroom. My phone was positioned upward near my face. It's not sitting so low near the bottom. About two minutes later, out of the top of my peripheral vision, I saw my brother walking out of the bathroom, wearing clothes that I have seen him own and wear before. The top half of the shirt is white while the bottom half is black. His head was positioned and focused oddly when he was walking out of the bathroom, like straight forward. He wasn't looking at me. I felt kind of startled, so I stood up and called out to him. No one else appeared in the living room, 
At that moment, I remembered that my brother was upstairs in the other bathroom showering. One thing I remember is that he walked out fast, but didn't seem to completely walk all the way out. It was like he was diminished halfway through. That part freaked me out the most. It was my brother that I saw, but something was just not quite right. I've never seen a doppelganger before, and it really freaked me out. I'm not sure if this is considered a glitch, but most nights, and I mean not every night, I can hear people talking. I can never fully hear what they're saying, but I hear people chatting back and forth. I wish I could say I hear the same people talking, but every time I hear them, it's not always the same voices. I do live in a building with four other tenants. But the thing is, I usually hear this chattering at odd hours of the night. It's when my well-known neighbors are asleep. I work in a kitchen, and I usually don't get home from work until at least 1am, so I'm usually up until about 6. I could chalk it up to spiritual activity, but it doesn't feel like that. It's almost like I'm hearing a life that I've lived somewhere else, or that other people have lived here over the years. Like I'm hearing things from other dimensions or past times. It may be odd to say, and I'm okay with being completely wrong, but it's as if the memories of these walls are speaking at night. The word is that the building I live in used to be a bed and breakfast, so this place definitely has some stories and has seen a lot of different faces in its day. It would make sense that I would be hearing different voices every time, but... It's really interesting to me. I am very interested in learning about what it is I'm experiencing, so if you have any ideas, let me know. This story happened in my childhood, when I was about 12 years old. I thought about it ever since, and I still don't know what it actually was, or what I should think of it. It's not the most spectacular story, but it was creepy to me. I grew up in an apartment that was pretty much outside the city and close to a forest, so we had a lot of green around where we were, always playing in it and sometimes going camping outside with friends in the summer. So one night a couple of friends and I decided to build up my tent and sleep outside. We were always staying up for a really long time and telling each other ghost stories. While we did this, we suddenly heard noises from outside the tent. We all held our breath. Then we could hear steps. They came closer and closer. And then the steps even went around our tent and then they stopped. We got really scared and we started saying things like, Whoever you are, go away, or we'll call the police. It seemed to work because the steps continued and headed away from our tent. After a minute or so, we then tried to be brave and went outside the tent to see who had come. But the only thing we could see was a woman in a really long dress, walking away in the dark. I still don't know who or what that was, but she had no business being out there. It still gives me chills to this day. My family and I have always been animal lovers. I've never known a time when we didn't have cats or dogs with us, and I feel like they helped raise me. When my father was in college, he adopted two cats named Tigger and Sato. Tigger passed away due to a coyote, and after she passed, Sato was never the same. She was grumpy and preferred to be by herself, but I would annoy her with my love anyway. One night, I was carrying her in her wicker basket with some blankets. 
I would bring her room to room as I cleaned up everything and did my normal things. I'd been petting her and listening to her purr when she suddenly stopped moving. I was maybe 12, and I remember praying for the first time to bring her back to me. It was awful to bring her out to my mom and tell her she had passed. I had a tradition whenever a pet died that I would make a concrete headstone with little marbles and their names on them. I had it set out on our kitchen counter to dry and left it there. The next morning I checked on it and found a small piece of her fur right in the center. I went around to everybody and asked if they had placed it there, and they all said that they hadn't. I felt like she was giving me one last piece of her. I kept it in a tiny knick-knack tea kettle, and it lives there with a few of her whiskers I found weeks following her passing. In a way, I think she gave me one last gift. This is a personal ghost story that happened to me as a kid. It's the story I always tell when I'm asked for a ghost story. My grandfather on my dad's side died before me or my younger cousin were born. We never knew him, and we never really heard much about him, but we were still very curious. We would talk about him a lot, just the two of us, and try to imagine what he'd be like if he was still with us. At some point as a child, I developed this weird obsession of, like, talking to my grandpa. I did this in all sorts of ways, and the only other person who knew about this was my younger cousin. We would have sleepovers a lot, and this would often be a late night discussion. On one particular sleepover, it was not a late night, but we were talking about my grandpa. In fact, it was the middle of a summer day. We were talking about him, and I suggested that maybe both of us should start talking to him like how I did when I was alone. She was super into the idea. We were in her bedroom with the door closed tight. There were no windows open. There were no other people around us. Just us, in a completely still house. We began talking to him, and we asked a few times for him to give us a sign if he could hear us. We were just about to give up when we decided to ask one more time. I said, Grandpa, can you hear us? Give us a sign. And at that point, the doorknob to my room turned and the door opened. This takes place on our farm at night, when I was 11 to 12. I farm, I always have, and I always will. But if you farm after dark, stuff gets scary. I've been farming since I was little, and I never really was afraid of the dark or any of those strange noises. But what happened that night still scares me to this day. I was probably 12 when this happened, and I'm 16 now. I was just getting done in one of our fields and was putting the tractor into the shed. It was probably around 9 o'clock by then, so it was pretty dark. I backed the tractor into the shed and shut it off. I got out of the tractor and shut the door. I walked down to the end of the shed to grab my phone charger and grabbed it. When I did, I heard a click and then a squeak of the tractor door opening. The hairs on my neck stood up, because I knew that nobody was in this shed with me. There were no lights in the shed, only the light of the pole light outside. I pulled out my phone for light, and at the time I had a flip phone, but it was still bright enough to see a dark figure sitting in the tractor. I booked it out of that shed as fast as I could. To this day, I don't know what that dark figure was, and I'm still spooked about it. I really don't like farming alone at night anymore. I was babysitting my nephew one night, who was still a little kid in diapers, but could talk. 
I'm not really sure how old he was, but he was little. My friend Matt had come over, and we were each playing PlayStations on separate TVs, back to back. My nephew starts crying upstairs, where he's sleeping in my mom's bed. I run up to check on him, and he says that there's a man behind the bedroom door. Now the bedroom door is open, and I can clearly see that there is no man hiding behind it. Then, just as I turn back, the door swings back with force over the carpet and bangs against the wall. I picked him up and decided to move him to my room. My room, at the time, was the room in the southeast corner of the house. I get him settled and he's just about to go back to sleep, when the closet door opens, folding in half slowly. I remember the dread that came over me. I took my nephew and yelled down to Matt to pack the systems up. My sister, who I was babysitting for, lived just across the road, so I moved us to her place. As we were about to cross, and I'm not kidding, a power line dropped from the pole and started jumping around at the end of my sister's driveway. I think that night was the second weirdest thing that's ever happened to me. Perhaps it was all just a weird coincidence, but still freaks me out to this day. Every night, I walk down the stairs to the basement and then into my gaming room to unwind with some video games. As I reach the bottom of the stairs, I turn on the light, but I keep it dimmed, just so I can make my way to my room. At about midnight, it's time to go to sleep, so I open the door of my gaming room to find the lights completely turned off. I deliberately keep the switch at halfway, and when I go to the staircase, they're always pulled all the way down. I've always thought that it was my wife who would come downstairs and shut them off, I politely asked her why she would shut the lights off, and she replied, I've never gone downstairs to shut the lights off, not even once. For context, I've seen shadowy images run by in the basement. I dismissed it as being fatigue. However, when my niece was just three years old, she said that there was a boy with red eyes on the staircase. We thought it was just her childhood imagination. Then, when my son was two to three years old, he ran into my arms after staring at the staircase. I asked him what was wrong, and finally he said, There's spooky, with red eyes. Could entities actually physically manipulate the light switch? I can't explain what's going on. About 25 years ago, I lived in Texas. Most of my family lived in Utah. My sister called me one afternoon and told me that my niece and her three-year-old daughter were in an accident, but had to be in two different hospitals. The three-year-old, Court, was at a children's hospital. You have to remember, there were no cell phones back then. My sister told me that they were fixing to do surgery on Court for a blood lump behind her eye. My sis was with her as her mom was having surgery at the other hospital. My sis asked me to pray for them both. I was laying on my bed praying, but when I prayed for court, it felt like I was in her room, and I put my hand on her head while I prayed for her. Jump forward two years, and my family went to Utah for a family reunion. One of the days that I was there, my sister asked if I wanted to see pictures of court in the hospital, and I did. The sister said that a weird thing happened. Court was sleeping, so sister went to get snacks out of the machine. When she got back to the room, Court was awake. Remember, she was only three. Court asked my sister where Aunt Deb was. That'd be me. She said that I was in Texas. Court said, no, she was in here. She put her hand on my head and she was talking. So, yeah, I guess I really was with her. 
I don't know if that's some sort of glitch in the matrix sort of thing, but it certainly was memorable. My husband saw my doppelganger in our hallway last night. We live in an old farmhouse, and we have had many paranormal and unexplained spirits, noises, etc. We have had paranormal investigators to our house, and were waiting on the report. Last night, I was in the bathtub. My husband came into the bathroom to wash his hands, and went back out to do the laundry. He was in the laundry room and looked through the kitchen, and saw what he thought was me in the hallway with no clothes on. He called my name and said that she turned her face toward him and gave a look like she didn't know who he was. Then she walked a step behind a column and our son came out from the same column but from the opposite way. Our son asked who my husband was talking to and said that he couldn't see me. My husband came into the bathroom where I was still in the tub, unaware of all of this. He made me swear left and right that I hadn't left the bathtub. He was very freaked out, and he made us follow him from room to room the rest of the night, and announce ourselves if we came into a room where he was. He had spoken to a medium a few months ago. She's coming Saturday to bless us and our home. She said that she would try to see what spirits were there and try to release them. She also told me before to place black salt around our doorways and the four corners of our home. I really hope it works. I had a pretty weird experience at the Hilton Garden Inn in Jackson, Mississippi, formerly the King Edward Hotel. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of this place being haunted or had an experience there themselves. I've looked online and I can't seem to find anything. It was built in 1923, closed in 1967, vacant for almost 40 years, and reopened in 2009, but that's about it. Anyway, my partner and I stayed here a couple of nights ago, just passing through on a road trip home. My partner is not a believer in the spiritual or paranormal realm. In the morning, he woke me up at 5 a.m. wanting to leave immediately. He's been sick during our vacation, so I thought that maybe he was just feeling crappy and wanted to get an early start on the rest of our trip, so we leave. After about 30 minutes on the road, he says, I want to tell you something, but I don't want to talk about it anymore after I tell you. We can talk about it later. I agree, and he tells me that something was in the room with us that night. Something not someone. He said that our pup was staring right at it and wasn't barking. I got full body chills and a huge lump in my throat when he told me. It freaked me out so much because he doesn't believe in these things and he just looked beyond terrified when he told me. We haven't talked about it again yet. Does anyone else have any experiences there? I'm a lucid dreamer, and I can control my dreams and my nightmares. But last night, I had a dream that was very different from anything else. I was working on the floor of my factory job and running the forklift, like normal, until out the bay door there were fireworks. It's more like a plume of light and an explosion coming from the other side of the valley. I live in the desert. We don't have valleys where I'm at. We decided to go outside after seeing these lights fly away into the sky to the left of us. Once we get outside of the bay door, the ground is illuminated like a full moon times ten. We were now in the backyard of my childhood house. We look up to the sky trying to find the light source, but it was just a night sky. When we look to the right, 
there was a typical looking alien and when it noticed us, it screeched and jumped up toward us, but it dissolved into the brightening light. I woke up in a scream and I couldn't sleep until daylight. My cat, who's pretty aware as well, stared at the wall behind me for a good 30 minutes. Now I can dream about scary stuff and when it happens, I can usually alter it. I can always control what I'm dreaming about, but this was different and I haven't dreamed about aliens in over 10 years. What is this supposed to mean? Have they decided to come back? Why me? Around 10 years ago, I was staying in an old bungalow where my nan lived. The bungalow itself always had a slightly creepy vibe to it, but I didn't pay it much attention. The temperature in the room that I stayed in would randomly drop very quickly out of nowhere. And whenever this happened, I could always sense a pressure difference, similar to how your ears feel when you enter a tunnel. One night I was asleep in bed and the temperature dropped so suddenly that it actually woke me up. Again, my ears felt like there was this big drop in pressure, as if all the sound and air had been drawn out of the room. I looked around the dark room, and there at the foot of my bed, looking up at me, was a face. It looked skeletal. The weird thing was, you would think that this would be terrifying, and if somebody described this happening to them, I would think how scary it must have been. But I felt no fear whatsoever. As ridiculous as it sounds, my mind just kind of rationalized it. Like, oh, that's weird. And then I must have just fallen back asleep. I just woke up the next day and went on about my business as normal, with no ill effects. And I never saw it again but I also never forgot it, because it was really, really odd. I rented a condo in Hawaii at the Hilton Turtle Bay on the north shore of Oahu. FYI, I can get a condo for a week on the hotel grounds for cheaper than a two-day stay at the hotel, so that's what I did. I arrived from California, put my stuff down, and headed out for the beach. After dark, I came back and eventually went to bed. The main bedroom was upstairs. As I'm trying to go to sleep, a woman screams at me from a couple of feet away, telling me to leave. It was really more like, get the fuck out. I'm shocked and rattled a bit. I say to myself, this is just a hypnagogic hallucination, and I try to make myself go back to sleep. I fall asleep and get screamed at again a few minutes later. I got out of bed and I remember actually saying out loud to myself, shit, rented a haunted condo. Then I said, I'm not leaving. I paid for a week, leave me alone, and I won't sleep in your bedroom, but I'm not leaving. The next day, my good friend shows up. I tell him he can sleep in the main bedroom, and he gives me a calculating look. So that night, after some fun adventures, he heads upstairs to go to sleep. I sit on the couch, awaiting the news. He comes down 30 minutes later, and says that I'm a total dick for not warning him about my bedroom. I innocently asked, what are you talking about? He said that some lady was screaming at him upstairs. I cracked up and told him that he's gonna have to sleep on the couch. I babysit for my mom's friend a lot. He has three daughters, but I usually only babysit the youngest, who's five years old. Last weekend, I stayed at their house overnight. During dinner that night, we were talking while I was walking around and cleaning up. All of a sudden, she asks, why is his face like that? 
I asked who she was talking about because there was nobody else in the house. She says, the man in the chair. Obviously, I see nobody in the chair, so I say, I don't know, why don't you ask him yourself? And she responds, I don't want to, he scares me. I try to ask what he looks like, but she refuses to tell me. Then we finish eating and she never mentions him again. But she does keep trying to make excuses to not go to sleep, which is really weird for her because she loves bedtime. After I get her to sleep, I took pictures around the kitchen just to see if anything would show up, but I got nothing. I've had paranormal experiences before, but never in their house that I know of. So maybe it's just a kid's creepy imagination, but she only watches things like Frozen and My Littlest Pony, so I don't think it's something she saw, at least not on television. It still creeps me out. So this happened a few months ago. I was babysitting my baby brother late at night. I'd say around 11 o'clock. I have a video baby monitor with me almost all the time, apart from this one time where I left it in my room while I went to grab a drink downstairs. While downstairs, I heard a loud crash coming from my parents' room where he sleeps as he's quite young. I also hear him crying Obviously panicked, I rush up the stairs, and I find that my brother is sleeping soundly, but my parents' TV is on the floor, and the screen is cracked. I put it back up and just hoped that my mom would believe me that I had no idea how it had fallen. Considering that it's quite heavy and on a stable surface, and the cats can't even knock it over, I was quite confused. Go forward a couple of minutes, and I'm in my room just relieved that my brother is safe. But I feel this constant negative energy. Anxiety just filled me. And I could feel eyes on me, but I knew that no one was home. Soon after my parents return, I tell my mom what happened. She checked my brother and the TV. She calls me in and says, what crack? I walked in to find that the TV was completely fine. I still can't explain what happened. I am a 26-year-old female and my boyfriend is a 26-year-old male. One day, we went for a big walk around the town that we were living in at the time. It was the middle of the day, probably around 2 p.m., and we were both completely sober. At one point, we were on the side of the road, on one of those lanes where people run and walk, and we saw a female child, around 12 years old if I had to guess, jogging. She was in our lane and coming our way. I remember finding it strange for this child to be out jogging on her own, there was no one else around, and it was a pretty remote area, like a countryside road. But I didn't mention anything to my boyfriend. We were walking side by side, so I walked behind him so that she could pass. I stopped seeing her for a few seconds, but when I saw her again next to me, she was a fully grown woman in her mid-forties. He immediately looks at me before I can say anything, in total shock, and asks, Did you see that? I asked him, did he also see a child turn into a woman? And he said, yeah. He said that she never really left his sight, but as he blinked and looked again, she was no longer a child. We even looked back to confirm and she was still the mid forties woman. Since then, I've been noticing other smaller glitches. I don't know if they were always there and I just didn't pay attention or if that started a whole chain of events. Either way, it was odd. Now, 
And this happened 14 years ago, and it happened while I was pregnant with my first, when my grandmother, who I was very close to, was dying. Anyway, my ex-husband was on the computer until he heard me screaming and yelling in my sleep. He came to wake me up and calm me down, so I did. He went to go to the bathroom, and while he was washing his hands, he saw in the mirror, which was facing our bed, a girl standing over me, looking at me. I was screaming in my sleep again. He said it was a shadow, and then he saw her walk away and disappear. He couldn't find her and thought it was bizarre, but he didn't feel that it was evil. A few months later, he saw her doing the same thing, only this time, I was sleeping peacefully. I had my baby and my grandmother had already passed away. We had a nightlight in our bedroom so that I could see my way around when getting up to feed the baby. He said that he could see her face more clearly due to the nightlight, but couldn't see who it was. She didn't look at him. She was just staring directly at me while I slept. And then she turned and walked away and disappeared. That was the last time that he saw it happen. What could that be? It's kind of creepy to hear that some girl is just standing by my bed looking at me while I sleep, even if he doesn't think it's evil. It still boggles my mind to this day. The house we had was brand new and we had built it only a year prior, so we have no idea where a spirit would have come from. When I was about six years old, I woke up during the night and made eye contact with a strange humanoid creature. It was looking at me through my bedroom window. My room was ground level and my bed was facing the window. Strangely, I remember choosing to leave my curtains open that night for the first time ever. So whatever this thing was, was in full view. When I initially saw it, I was completely dumbfounded and couldn't believe my eyes. I shook my head, no, as I was thinking that this couldn't really be happening. I pinched myself to make sure that I wasn't dreaming. Then, the creature frowned. I nodded my head yes, and the creature smiled. Again, I shook my head no, and it frowned. So I nodded, and once again, it smiled. I may have repeated this a few more times. Whatever it was seemed to be almost greenish in color and had a roundish face. Kind of like Yoda. I can't remember all of the details, but I distinctly remember telling myself that this was really happening and not to allow myself to chalk it up later to being a dream. I kept telling myself over and over, this was real. This was not a dream. This was real. I still have no idea what that thing was. My girlfriend and I moved to a new apartment about six months ago. From the first night we moved in, I noticed weird things out of the corner of my eye. I see what looks like dark, static figures in our hallway and bathroom. Sometimes the figures move, but they mostly look like they're just standing still. I never see them fully, only out of the corner of my eye. When I turn to look, they vanish. We have a cat and dog who have both acted strangely when it comes to the bathroom. My dog demands to be with me, and if I do not let him, he freaks out, which is something he's never done. Also, our cat will sit in the dark bathroom for hours, also something that is a new behavior. There have also been many times where my dog will start growling or barking at the hall or bathroom. Whatever it is, it usually doesn't do anything physical, except for one time. I had a migraine, so I was sitting in a hot shower with the lights off. Suddenly the cabinet door under the sink opened and slammed shut. When I looked at it, expecting to find the cat or dog, there was nothing. I was alone. That was several months ago, and it's the only time something physical has ever happened. 
I told my girlfriend about it, and she agreed the apartment has a weird vibe, but she hasn't seen the figures. I'm just curious if anyone else has experienced this. I feel like the stress is just maybe making me crazy or something. Maybe not. As a college student, I worked security on my college campus. Plenty of strange stuff. Walking through a chapel at three o'clock in the morning, when someone decides they should start playing Phantom of the Opera on the large pipe organ is an experience. High school cheerleaders seizing in the shower, suicide attempt, and a few burglars. Strange stuff. But the creepiest is that we also had responsibility for a church adjacent to campus. Not a huge church, and probably about 40 years old. I was doing my rounds, first walking the exterior, and then walking through the interior at about 3.30 in the morning. I hear a toilet flush, and then I hear footsteps going down the hall, except that there's nobody in either the bathroom or the hall. In fact, I am standing in the hall, and I can see the bathroom. I called the other staff over and we did a complete search, including the boiler room, which could have come from a horror movie. There was nobody there and there were no signs of entry. A year or so later, a coworker claims to have been walking past the church when he saw a lady staring down at him partway behind a curtain. It looked like she was from the 1950s or 1960s with cat eye glasses. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's haunted. This was a couple of months ago. I was staying the night at my significant other's house. We were laying in bed, watching TV. Her two daughters, ages five and eight, came into the room. The five-year-old was leaning against my side of the bed and looking over my chest toward her mother, whose side of the bed is near the wall. Who's that lady? The five-year-old says. Me, thinking she was being silly and talking about her mom, said, That's your mommy. The five-year-old says, No, not her. The lady behind her. She was staring at the wall, looking at eye level, about where a person's eyes would be if they were standing there. Gave me the chills. My significant other who was chatting with her other daughter didn't hear this exchange. Later, when I told her, she got freaked out and told me that she was pretty certain her house was haunted. Apparently, she's had all kinds of things happen. Now when I go over there, I get a little paranoid and I get an eerie feeling. I'm not sure if it's because of anything actually supernatural or if I just expect it to be haunted because she's told me those things, regardless of whether it's true or not, you know? The only other things I've experienced have been lights randomly turning on, and my glasses disappearing from where I definitely left them. Haven't seen them since, actually. I had to get new ones. The whole deal with the five-year-old really freaked me out, though. I still have no idea what she was looking at. I know that this story is a little vague, but it happened about a year and a half ago and I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. I live in Alabama. Behind my house is a hill sloping downward and then up again. It's covered in woods for several acres. One day I heard a crunching sound outside, about 20 yards away from the back porch. I immediately went out and looked it was in the middle of the day, and I saw three almost humanoid figures jumping up the far side of the hill. When I say jumping, they looked exactly like how deer look when they're kind of bounding up hills, 
but they were definitely not deer. They were all on two legs, going completely vertically up the hill. I couldn't make out any other kind of defining features, other than that they were kind of tan and white in color. I ran inside to get my wife, but of course they were gone by the time we got back out there. I haven't seen them since, but I do regularly hear strange sounds outside at night. And we've also had several yard signs and decorations that have ended up being inexplicably broken. I know the woods behind my house. I know what they look like. I know what they sound like. And this has just not been normal. In 2008, I was in the Navy. We were over a hundred miles from any land, and it was about three to four in the morning off the coast of Peru. I was an electronics technician, so I worked in radio with one other guy, a radio man, and we just sat up scanning the HF, UHF, and VHF radios listening for drug runners. We intercepted a UHF signal that played a short piano preamble followed by a haunting, computerized-sounding woman's voice, reading numbers. Eleven. Nine. Four. Six. This went on for about a minute. Then the preamble repeated, followed by the same number sequence. Then it was gone. We recorded the transmission, wrote the numbers down, informed the captain, and shortly, a message was sent off to the area commander about the strange message. The reply we received was, Disregard. Creeped me out. I came to find out that this is a number station, and while the phenomenon is not entirely understood, it's likely a method for getting a secure message or code to an intelligence agent in the field over an insecure method of communication. Since the numbers could be attached to a one-time code, it's basically indecipherable. Either way, it was super creepy. This is not my story. I heard it on a very new podcast in Norway where one of our celebrity mediums interviews the everyman and listens to their stories. This is one of the stories. Some of these experiences are quite remarkable, and I wish more people could hear them all. This happened in northern Norway in the 80s. A man and his brother-in-law used to take a rowboat to go to the grocery store. This was, as I said, in northern Norway in the 80s, not many urban areas. The wives, I think, were in the house on land and waited for them to come back from the sea. Suddenly, they see one of the guys from the boat walking over to the estate, walking toward the house and around a corner. The women were very puzzled by this. Maybe he'd forgotten something. And had he changed clothes? They didn't see the boat. They waited for him to come inside the house, but no one came. A couple of hours later, he and his brother-in-law came home with the groceries. A couple of weeks later, they would go on the same trip to get groceries by boat. This day, the sea was very dangerous, and the boat had tipped over, and they both drowned. And when they died, his wife suddenly remembered that the clothes he wore on that day when he drowned was the same outfit he wore when they saw him walk toward the house that day, two weeks before. My friend is a church custodian, and he's told me a lot of paranormal stories. While I was talking to him about an experience we had, I realized that I had seen an embodiment of one of the spirits from our church, something I had previously thought that I hadn't experienced. 
I saw it when I was very young, so I never put it together, until I was talking to my friend about something he had seen. He was talking about the time we'd been lured into the church by a dark figure in the window, which proceeded to lead us on a wild goose chase through the church. He described the figure he had seen as an average-sized male with no features, just all black. After hearing this, I remembered a time where I was waiting on my parents, who were talking to some people after evening service. Mostly everybody had gone home at this point, and the lights were all turned off on every floor except the ground floor. Being the adventurous little kid I was, and not really believing in ghosts at the time, I decided to go to the third floor, with all the lights off. As I rounded the steps to the third floor, I saw, thanks to the light in the parking lot coming through the window, the silhouette of an all-black man. The entire shadow was black, and I couldn't make out any features. I immediately ran back to my parents and told them, but as any good Baptist parents would do, they told me it was just somebody from the church. This occurred in the same spot that my friend said he had seen the figure. This happened to me around six years back, when I was visiting family in Alaska. I was borrowing a car to go visit some family when I lost control on a two-lane highway and hit a tree. I was freezing cold, and there was no point in staying in my car because the windows were smashed. I was scared. It was night, and I had no way of calling for help. When I saw some headlights coming down the highway, I got out an emergency light and flagged the person down. It turned out to be some old Max Semi. A big guy opened the door and let me in. He asked if I was right, and I told him I was fine, but I had crashed, and I thanked him very much for helping me out of the cold. I told him my name, and he said that his name was Bill. He ended up dropping me off in a small town ten miles ahead, and told me he had to go. I thanked him again, and I went inside a small restaurant. I told him that some trucker named Bill helped me out. They all got a very strange look. They told me that that was impossible, because the only trucker who drove those roads named Bill had died in an accident six years prior to that day. I got chills. It's very weird, and I still don't believe in ghosts, but mine and the bartender's descriptions matched perfectly. No matter what I do, I can't disprove what happened that night. In case anyone was wondering, the bartender said that Bill had jackknifed on the highway to avoid someone who spun out on the road. Alaska drivers, please be careful. My family and I have always been animal lovers. I've never known a time when we didn't have cats or dogs with us, and I feel like they helped raise me. When my father was in college, he adopted two cats named Tigger and Cito. Tigger passed away due to a coyote, and after she passed, Cito was never the same. She was grumpy and preferred to be by herself, but I would annoy her with my love anyway. One night, I was carrying her in a wicker basket with some blankets. I would bring her room to room with me as I cleaned up. I had been petting her and listening to her purr when she suddenly stopped moving. I was maybe 12 and I remember praying for the first time to bring her back to me. It was awful to bring her out to my mom and tell her she had passed. I had a tradition that whenever a pet died, I would make a concrete headstone with little marbles and their name on it. I had set it on our kitchen counter to dry, and I left it there. The next morning, I checked on it and found a small piece of her fur right in the center. I went around to everyone and asked if they had placed it there, and they all said that they had not. It felt like she was giving me one last piece of her. I kept it in a tiny knick-knack tea kettle. It lives there with a few of her whiskers that I had found weeks after her passing. I feel like she came to give me one last gift.